Hello everyone, hope you're having an absolutely amazing day so far today. My name is Pandaforce, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Tusca, the world event. Now you might be asking, what even is Tusca? I haven't heard anything about this. Well, Tusca is basically this giant, massive, planet-eating, destroying monster that's headed straight towards Gilinor. So the forces of Ceridomen, Zamorak... Armadil and even the Godless have all joined together in order to fight her off. That's where you come in. As players, it's our job to save RuneScape and Gilinor, the game we love. So what you do is you hop into your teleport, your home teleport interface, you zoom out, and you click on Tuska's back. That will take you right toward the world event and exactly where you need to go. Once you get there, you'll see this giant awesome cutscene and you'll be introduced to the wizard who discovered that Tusk is headed towards Gilinor, and he will point out um, all of the god factions off to the side. Now, because we're all fighting for the same cause, it doesn't really matter which faction you pick. It's more of a way to say, I support this faction even though we're all doing the same thing. I personally picked Armadil, you pick whatever you want. As you can see, we have a bank chest right here. The god factions are off to the east side of Tusca, and the wizard is off to the west. Now the question becomes, well, what do I do? How do I, how do I help stop Tusca? Well, every hour on the hour, meaning at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, etc., the event opens up uh, to, to start, to begin. And right behind the wizard, you will see an area where you can jump in to like, this tiny little island. And what happens from there is that everyone is divvied up into groups of 1 to 10 people, and there are four different events, four different islands, that occur in a random order. At each island, there are different tasks to complete, and uh, working on each task basically charges the staff that you're going to be plunging directly into Tusk's face. At this point, I will give you some clips of me going through each different island, talk to you about each one, what you need to be doing in each one, and the different XP that you can receive. As you can see on the top left of the interface, there's even a countdown timer to tell you when the main part of the event actually starts. This way, you're not wasting any time, you can get right into the action. And once you can, you can click on the obstacle here, jump space, right on the gap, and then you will be put on this little island and put into queue to start the instance. After a few seconds, you'll be put into a game with a few people, and this is the island that I was put on first. Now, before I go into anything, I want to point out that on the top left of the interface, you'll see that a question mark has appeared. If you click on that, it'll describe the island that you're on and basically any tasks that you need to complete. So if you're confused after this video or you have any further questions, you forget something, click on that, it'll tell you anything that you need to know. So basically what you do on this island is you cut the vines, you kill the, the tentacles, you mine the rock if it appears, and you nurture the roots. I'm, I'm going to be a lot more specific than that. So when you cut the vines, you'll get woodcutting XP, and you'll get these mysterious herbs in your inventory. When you clean those, they can be used to nurture the roots. You'll see the roots kind of uh, toward the very close bottom of the central plant. When you nurture those, they grow out farther and farther until eventually a little sprout comes up. When that sprout uh, comes up, you can collect the, the fruit from it or the seed from it, and you deposit it on the central uh, tree, we'll call it, and that further empowers the Enema Mundi and the staff that you're going to be plunging into Tusca's face. Alternatively, you can kill the tentacles that spawn for the herbs, and if a, um, a fallen rock appears, you can mine that. Cleaning the herbs, of course, will give you Herblor XP. I already said cutting the vine gives you wood cutting XP. Um, Nurturing the roots give you farming XP, and of course mining the rock will give you mining XP. Any combat that you undergo anywhere in this event will give you combat XP. I do want to make a quick tip about this whole event in general, and that is that spam clicking is not your friend. If you're spam clicking on pretty much anything I've noticed, it tries to start and start and start the same action, but it never completes it. Whereas if you click it once, it will complete it very quickly, and it's as simple as that. Just try to relax a little bit and not spam click, and everything will be so much easier. Now, if you look at the top left of the interface again, you'll see a white dot kind of progressing along a track, and when it hits uh, each one of those different uh, little little marks, you get pushed to the next island. This was the second island that I had in this run. Again, four different things you can do. Uh, the first one is going to be constructing these little pillars, these pyrons, and this will give you construction XP. 
basically what this does is it's supposed to divert the electricity and the lightning away from the staff. Also, there will be these tiny little lightning balls, and after you uh, kill them or defeat them in combat, you become supercharged with electricity. And think of it like static electricity, where after a while it'll kind of wear off. There will be a bar above your head showing how much electricity you still have. So basically, you want to go to the center and click Charge Unstable Core as quickly as you can. That will further charge the staff and make it stronger to defeat Tuska. There are also these little markings that'll appear on the ground. If you click on those, it'll place a little lodestone type thing down on the ground there, and that will further divert the lightning away from the staff. After that lightning hits, you become charged with electricity again, and you can deposit that in the center like you did before. The last thing is that these larger lightning sentinels appear, and with those you need to click on them and that will attract them to you, and you can lure them toward the center. Again, once they get there, they kind of explode, you get charged with electricity, and you can deposit it in the center. Of course, combat will give combat XP, the building of the pillars gives construction XP, everything else gives hunter XP. Landing on the third island, there's only two main things that you can do on this one. The first, as you can see in the, in the bottom right of my screen, there's these tentacles appearing. You need to take the holy fire and that will give you this torch that's lit. You need to equip it and then you click on one of the tentacles to start burning it. Again, don't spam click, that just kind of screws you up more than anything. Uh, you will just keep burning and burning all of the tentacles that spawn. It gives really, really good fire making XP. I can see myself doing a lot of this. Anyone who really needs fire making XP, I would say to probably focus on this. Similar to the static electric charge, um, your, your torch runs out of fire eventually and you need to run back to where you got it to refuel it and then come back. So you run back and forth a little bit, but it's really not bad at all. The other thing that you can do is climb down this rock face and to the north there will be this altar that you need to inspect. It will give you this holy relic type thing and after that you can click on any one of the three different graves. After that you will emerge in the underworld basically and you'll see all of these spirits floating around. Climb back up the rocks, and then release the Tormented Soul. This, this gives Prayer XP. At that point, both you and the Tormented Soul will appear in the normal dimension, and then you engage in combat with the Tormented Soul, you kill it, and then you basically take control of that spirit, that soul. Then an area to the north will start glowing, and you can click on that to enter the last rites. That will basically release uh, the spirit into the afterlife, and you can repeat this over and over again for combat XP. And I do believe it's pretty good prayer XP, so I would also think that this is another really good thing to do during the world event. Then we hop on to the fourth and final island. Keep in mind, all of these islands kind of spawn in a random order, depending on what group you're in and stuff like that. So this, is, this order might not be the order that you get. Now, on this island, you basically run in clockwise circles. You can't go counterclockwise. And you'll see that on each island, there's this little node. Siphoning from this node gives divination experience, and you need to be at the right one, because most of them are inactive. Keep in mind, though, again, that what's active for you might not be active for the same people in your group. Another uh, nifty feature about this is that every, every now and then, a, a different person in your group is kind of um, randomly selected to be the gate stone. In the top left interface again, you'll see a button to click to teleport to them. There will even be an arrow on your minimap to show you who is the gate stone, where they are, so that way if you see that they are by uh, the node that's active for you, you can teleport straight to them. makes it super easy. Just like uh, some of the previous islands, there can be a falling rock that'll spawn. Again, you can mine that, that'll give you mining XP, and again, help further along the whole process. This whole um, process, again, is to enhance the staff that you see floating around in the center, which, very shortly, we will be stabbing directly into Tuska's face. Now, this really is the moment that we have all been waiting for. After you've completed the four islands, you are all thrust from every single group onto this part of Tuska. You run down along the south end, and there's going to be this, uh, this click box. It's really small and awkwardly placed kind of underneath one of the teeth. You'll see me struggling to find it right now, but you climb up that tooth, and after that, you're right on top of Tuska at the very front, and you'll see all of these weak spots. You can click stab at the weak spot. The, you'll kind of like walk around like you're on the moon, and you jump up in this really cool uh, cutscene animation type thing, stab into Tuska, and after that, you're thrown away. That's You're done. You're done with the main part of the event. You land back on the main part where you started. Again, really slowly, kind of cool animation. I like the Jagex did that. And you're done. That's the main part of the event. But this only took 
what, like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. It doesn't take a long time. What are you supposed to do with the rest of the hour? Well, basically, you can see these little skilling nodes to the northwest and northeast of uh, areas of this island. The green ones are long little hairs of Tusca that you can chop down. They give woodcutting XP, and the blue ones are... Think of the Serenity Poles in Priftinus, right? You stand on top of them, you get little uh, agility ex uh, experience drops. Nothing too fancy, but it's still, I mean, it's agility and it's AFK. What more could you want? As you're doing these things, you can get these little Tusca fragments. Now, you can turn these in in any quantity to the wizard that I talked about before, and each one gives you five more contribution factor. The contribution factor can be spent at the reward shop, which is at... Um, the different god emissaries that I mentioned before. Now Jagex is smart. Jagex knows that not everybody likes skilling. So at the very south end of Tusca, you can see that there are these little parasites you can kill. Uh, I, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I didn't spend a lot of time here. First of all, because it is still the first, um, first day of the event, so it's very crowded. It was difficult to get kills most of the time. Like, what you're seeing now is pretty much the only ones that I got. I would assume that after you kill a bunch, you do still get Tusca Fragments, and you can turn those in for more, um, more contribution factor. Thankfully, this is a safe event. As you will see in just a second, if you die, the wizard will pull you right back in, which is fantastic. Safe events are always fun. Look at me die like a stupid noob. If you're curious to what sort of combat gear I'm using, just bandos and drago rapiers, that's it. You don't really need anything fancy here. Again, it's a safe event. Most of the combat's pretty low level. Nothing really to worry about. Now, what are you supposed to do with this contribution factor? Well, spend it on rewards, of course. Right-click on any of the god factions over here, and you can access the reward interface. The armor you can get from this world event is a Tusca War Priest set, which... Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to increase your critical strike chance. My guess would be based off of the number of pieces that you're wearing. The weapon section is just cosmetic overrides for staffs, and um, the telescope cosmetic override is for an offhand magic weapon, such as a book or an orb. They all look pretty cool, in my opinion. The abilities you can buy were all uh, available in the previous world events, except for the Tusca Wrath ability. Now, I'm not sure specifically what this does, but I know it's supposed to be used during Slayer, so my best guess is going to be that if you're on a Slayer task, it does massive damage to a Slayer monster. You know, maybe it's a threshold, so it's not going to be up as frequently. Something along those lines. And of course, under the other category, we have all of the sort of lamps you could want, the, uh, the emotes for the event a new teleport uh, animation, the same teleport animation that actually got you to the event. All looks really cool. I can't wait to spend so much time trying to unlock everything that I can. If you found this guide at all helpful, make sure to share it with your friends. You know, the event did just come out. It's going to be a little confusing for everybody. Make sure they know what to do. Together, we can take down Tusca and save Gilinor. Anyway, guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, favorite, things like that. It really helps me out. I would appreciate any and all feedback in the comments as well as suggestions for future content. I am open to any and all suggestions. My name is Panda Force. Quick shout out to my friends in Clan Quark. Other than that, guys, have an awesome, awesome day. Stay happy. Good luck with the world event. I cannot wait to see you in my next video.